Finding your dog's nails isn't as simple as charging up your Dremel and grabbing your dog. I'm here today to walk you through the different speeds, attachments, and getting your dog acclimated to the sounds and the sensations of the Dremel. By the end of this video, you should be able to have an idea of a course of action as well as the proper use so that you can get those nails as short as possible. And I'm going to demonstrate on one of my dogs as well so you can get a real world look at what to do. So first, let's touch on getting your dog used to the sounds. It can be really jarring as they make a lot of noise, so simply grabbing your dog's paw and turning it on won't likely work. I'll assume for most people this is probably one of the first times you will be attempting the process, so we will start at the first steps. And you're going to need some treats as well. And here's a tip, pick something really high value like meat or cheese if possible or peanut butter, you can put that on a lick mat or in a Kong, just something that's really loaded up and that smells good and tastes great, that's just going to be extra beneficial to you. We want this to be a good experience for your pet so that they associate the Dremel with reward. So step number one is having the treats and the Dremel. Now step number two is securing your dog. I know you all don't have grooming tables at home, so for small dogs, a higher place like a counter or a tabletop works well. If you have a larger dog, you may want to attach a leash to them and then attach that leash to somewhere that's pretty sturdy so they can't actively choose to walk away. And once you do that, offer reward. So we've gotten pretty far. We're at step three, and that's bringing up the Dremel. You can let them smell it while it's unplugged, off, or with the battery removed, and they will likely be curious. So if they do choose to smell it, you can actually offer a reward for that as well. Yay! Any positive association with the tool will do you a whole lot of favors in the end. Okay, so now you want to hold it away from your pet and turn it on. As I mentioned, this can be rather scary, it's loud, it's noisy, so often dogs can react to it. So be prepared to hold on to your dog's leash or collar if they are at all nervous so that they are at least secured. And once they are still, you can reward them and turn off the Dremel. <laughs> I know what you're thinking, you haven't even got to a nail yet, but you should really let your dog get used to the sound and make the association of that sound with positive reinforcement. So optimally, you're going to turn it on and off and give rewards at least a handful of times before beginning the actual dremeling process. So now let's assume you've done that. You are now at step four. So grab a foot and as a side note, if you yourself have long hair, tie it back. You do not want your hair getting stuck in that thing. It hurts and it might break it off. Another tip before beginning is if your dog also has long hair on their feet or their toes, you may want to trim it back or hold it under your hand, the one that is holding the paw. And this is for the exact same reason. You don't want it getting stuck on their hair either. If your grinder has a plastic shell around it, this will help prevent that, but just still be very cautious. I do have a video where I go into more thoroughly on how to hold your dog's legs in a comfortable position. So check that out. I will link it above and below in the description and just click on the link and you can watch that. I do have some other great tips in there as well. But let's talk about how to hold the foot. Obviously you're going to want to hold it securely, but use one of your fingers to push the toe forward so that it is extended slightly above the rest of the toes. And this is just going to make things easier to work on. Okay, you're finally ready to get started. You're going to go in at about a 45 degree angle and grind the bottom of the nail. Now the same thing goes with nail clipping. You are looking for a small pink or black dot, depending on what color your dog's nails are. And that forms in the middle of the nail. If there is already a dot present, like if you have clipped the nails with a nail clipper beforehand, quickly press the grinder to the nail to smooth out the edge. And you're going to want to use somewhere between light and medium pressure for this. If they have a small dot or no dot present, you can stay in the grinding position for a few seconds in about a medium pressure and then check your work. You're going to want that dot to take up 
ideally most of the space of the nail. After the bottom is dremeled, you can move to the tip. This would be at a more 90 degree angle, again, using medium pressure. Now, providing that you did your job on the first part, the nail should be as short to the quick as possible. You just wanna smooth out the edges on the tip, so quickly grind off this area and don't linger. You can also do the sides as well, and this just ensures that it is as short as possible around the quick. Now, to have the most control of your grinder, you wanna hold it as close to your hands as possible, and, I have caught my finger from time to time on more than one occasion, and it does not feel great, but I would rather me than the dog. Now feel free to reward after each toe or each foot, depending on how comfortable your dog is with the process, and try to make the experience just as positive as possible. Now let's quickly talk speeds and attachments. Your speed to me will be determined by your level of comfort, as well as what the job entails. Personally, I almost always use a high speed, but I didn't always. For some of the work, such as smoothing, a lower speed works really well. The only reason why I continue to use a high speed is because I need to work fast. I have a lot of dogs to get to in a day. But you at home have the luxury of time. So take it. Use that low speed to do any smoothing you need done. And if you clip the nails beforehand, you can absolutely use a low speed throughout the entire process. A high speed, in my opinion, would only be necessary if you are trying to do some heavy lifting, i.e. you have a lot of nail to grind down. So for a pet parent, a low speed is absolutely fine to use 95% of the time. But what attachments work best? Now, partly I find this to be preferential, but also consider the shapes and what they would make a piece of wood into when you're trying to visualize how it would work on a nail. A flat tip will do just that, make it flat, but a conical shape will have more of a taper in it. And depending on where the dip is in it, it could make it longer or shorter at the bottom, at the top, or sometimes in the middle. I personally like to use a flat tip. It works great. Round is okay as well, but I don't find a huge difference, but as a pet parent, just know it won't drastically change the outcome really, so try not to worry too much. Flat just makes your angles, I feel, easier to work with. And as for grit, I usually recommend a 60. No real need to change from that. You can use higher numbers for smoothing, but again, you don't really need to worry that much. But a 60 grit will do a good job and can really get those nails short. Also, I use a sandpaper as opposed to diamond bits as I just find the diamond bits have a tendency to be more smoothing and often leaves you doing more work in the end. And this is just since more pressure is needed. They're almost more polishers in some senses, although I will say they do a great job of smoothing, uh, but I wouldn't describe them as being a workhorse by any means. So depending on your dog's level of comfort with this, as well as your own, you could do a paw every day until you're done all four, just to try and spread it out. Shorter bursts are often less stressful for both you and the dog, but I totally understand that not everyone has the time for this. So potentially you could do the fronts and the backs on different days, so that's done over a weekend, or maybe two before a bath and two after. It's all gonna be about finding what works best for you. Now, let's talk schedule. Once a week grinding often negates the need to clip a dog's nails beforehand. So if your dog tolerates the grinder really well, as opposed to the clippers, then this might be a better choice for you. But schedules are really hard to come up with without seeing the individual dogs since factors like where and how often they walk, as well as activity levels will come into play, but no more than a month, generally speaking, and if possible, every two weeks would be best. But this is just generalized though, so keep that in mind. And potentially, I may make a video to review different Dremel models and their RPMs so that you don't have to, and just let me know if there's any interest in the comments below in seeing a video like that. Also, Side tip, keep quick stop on hand in case of any potential accidental nicks to stop the bleeding right away. And 
check out this video right here where I tell you all about that and more mistakes that you could be making during the at-home nail maintenance process.